Hey y'all, Data Guy here. So today I got a really cool video for you. It's kind of an updated version of the uh, Snowflake Quick Start for using an ELT workflow, basically where you know, you're loading your data into Snowflake and then using DVT to transform it within Snowflake because it's so cheap to uh, transform your data within Snowflake because it's super cheap. Um, and having Airflow as the management tool to manage all, you know, all the VT workflows, give you a uh, UI to actually monitor those workflows. Um, and so this quick start guide initially as written was just kind of using bash operators to trigger DBT commands. And so it involved kind of two different DAGs. And so what I've done is updated this for Cosmos. Uh, did this actually in conjunction with my pal Adrian over from Snowflake. Uh, where instead of using bash operators um, and you know not really giving you any insight in what's going on in the sub actions within those DBT um, workflows after you just trigger them using bash, um, we now have full visibility into the DBT uh, workflow and it's only one DAG you have to create. Um, so it's really just creating your DBT models and then referencing them within DBT DAG and Cosmos plus Airflow, Cosmos open source package, uh, that will just read dbt provides you a visualization layer similar to what dbt cloud does with their kind of visualization tool but instead it visualizes your dbt workflows within airflow uh, so you can kind of you know see it in the context of the rest of your data pipeline rather than in isolation so without further ado we'll get started uh, and so pretty much everything you're going to want to follow here um, i'll show you uh, on the Snowflake DBT side is still the same. The real changes are just once we get into Cosmos and actually setting that up. But what you'll need to do within your DBT environment before you get into actually uh, creating your Cosmos or creating your DAGs or your scripts um, is first creating a separate DBT user. So what you'll do is create or replace a DBT user with you know just this password updated. And what you're going to use is when we're writing the DAG, this is how you're going to authenticate into Snowflake and then, you know, orchestrate those tra DBT transformations. So here you can see we're just creating a DBT dev role, uh, creating our uh, work a special warehouse just for this particular workflow, uh, and then just granting access, everything in that warehouse to our DBT dev role. So we don't have to bother adding him permissions to manage all the tables that we're going to create here. So once we're done with that, we will just create a couple tables as well. Um, so here you're actually just going to create uh, two tables, bookings one and bookings two. And then, so you'll see bookings two here as well. And then you'll also want to make a customer's table. So the actual workflow we're doing here is we're going to take some information about our customers and their bookings uh, for our hotel. And we're just going to uh, do some transformations on that data. The, the, process isn't i mean the outcome is really important we're kind of using this practice to show what's going on with dbt and snowflake uh, so like even within here they don't even really describe the data uh so it's it's very much just this is kind of a context of what you're going to want to use but the data we're doing here isn't really super interesting and then what you'll also do is i created a analysis and transform schema these will also be automatically created so they just just want to call out why they're here and then within your public schema this is where you're going to want to have the bookings and uh, one and two and your customer's table and make sure you know, you're logged in as that DBT dev user while you're doing that so that you have permissions to these tables that you're creating. Then after you're done with that, um, you're pretty much all set on the Snowflake side of things. So then we can go into VS Code and start creating all of our DBT files. Um, and so this example, so you're gonna run DBT uh, init in your DAGs folder. Um, so you can see here, let me uh, close my open editors and you'll see I have Astro CLI generated um, Airflow run or Astro runtime here. So just local air, localized Airflow running on Docker. And then to create your DBT project, you'll log in terminal um, and you'll, I mean, you'll have to install DBT, initialize a new project within uh, your DAGs folder. Just that's the structure we're going with that we can easily access um, the DBT models and everything you know everything within there from our dag and not to path back out and then end to a dbt folder so here you see we have um our packages where you're going to use dbt labs utils um, and this is just to bring in some basic uh, dbt methods to actually transform the data um, and we'll also have our dbt project definition and you can just kind of see pointing in our models path uh pointing it to our analysis path so 
the we're transforming this data for analysis. So we have our transform path, we have our seed path, which is where your data is going to go. So that's the data that we're going to send or put in a snowflake into those tables. So in real life, you probably replace this with some kind of extraction set, and that's where having Airflow come in handy to actually manage the you know extraction of that data from the source, bringing it into wherever into Snowflake, so DBT can transform it. Then you'll see we just have you know our uh, snapshots, target paths um, for target DBT models, and then also tell DBT to reference our transform and analysis folders um, for the rest of our models. So if we go into models, you'll see we're going to create um, to analysis, see our analysis SQL statement. So hotel count by day SQL statement. So here we have booking date, hotel count ID as count bookings. Um, and this is taking it from the prep data. So this is a reference to a uh, table or table within our DBT workflow. After it's been cleaned, we're going to reference it here um, and just select the uh, hotel data that we want from the bookings that's been cleaned. And then here you have our 30 day uh, average cost. So here again, we are figuring out what was the average cost by booking um, from that prep data. And so this is, these are two analysis uh, operations. This is after the data is transformed. And how we're actually gonna get the data to that is first combine those two bookings tables. So here we have just DBT utils unit relations. So this is that DBT util that we imported earlier. Um, that's why that's there. And we're going to reference bookings one and bookings two to combine them into one table. Then we are going to select uh, first name, last name, birthday from our customers table. And then we're going to insert that into our uh, prep data data table. So this is how we're getting that data that we're running that analysis on. And this is, you know, we're just selecting, hey, basic information about the customer and then also um, the information about their booking, their hotel, or their cost. We also have one macro here. Uh, where we are just basically pointing. And so this first macro, which is generate schema name, is just going to basically read whatever the schema of uh, our source file is and then set that as a schema name within Snowflake. Uh, and then within set query tag, it's just going to add a session query tag. So we know, hey, when does this trans transformation run? Um, and what model was it on just basic information about that query so that we can track the query tags for DBT models. So we can kind of, if this you're using this project at scale, you're going to want to tag everything, make sure that it's all organized very nicely. Otherwise, DBT projects can really kind of spiral out and just how much data and how many different <laughs> transformation files you'll actually have. Um, so now that we've got all of our DBT set up, then we can finally go into Airflow. Um, and you're going to want to use the Cosmos package. So this is how we're doing our visualizations. And then there's Snowflake, because obviously we're connecting to Snowflake. Don't need to bring in the DBT package because it's uh, already pre-baked into the, to this image. And we're also using Cosmos to read the DBT, so you don't even need DBT really in the first place. Then within our DAG, right here, our Cosmos DAG, um, I'm just going to show you the full DAG code because I kind of need to explain what this is um, in aggregate. So here we have date time os just basic you know so we can read system level messages and have proper date time configuration and then from cosmos we're reading in the dbt dag project config profile config execution config and then the cosmos profiles for postgres and snowflake and so what these different modules we're reading in are is so dbt dag obviously is the tool we're using to create a, DB, a dag that is just based on those dbt models with us at actually needing to make a separate um, bash operator that's going to trigger each dbt model and i'll show you what this looks like in the ui uh, it's not just as simple as it looks here um, so the project config is obviously the configuration details for what this project is running the profile name and you can see this is where we have our snowflake user information so you'll need to create a snowflake connection in the airflow ui to actually obviously run all this so call it Snowflake Connection. And then this is going to read in the information uh, it needs for the profile to actually run the RDBT models. And I actually misspoke there. So that was the profile config. The project config is where we're just pointing our DBT model actually towards. So really simple. This is just going to say, hey, use the project details that are already defined within my DBT project and use those as the configuration details for this dbt DAG. Then we also have our execution config. So this is saying, hey, where can I go to look to find all of these different dbt SQL statements, all the different executables that our dbt DAG 
DAG is actually going to execute. And then we also have our operator arguments. So this is installing our dependencies onto the different operators. Uh, just in case you don't actually want a dependencies, that is to avoid any kind of dependency conflicts uh, because sometimes Cosmos can, or the versions of Python can conflict with it. And then we also have our profile config where we're just reading in the profile that we set here, which is how we're gonna actually connect to our database. Uh, then the Snowflake user profile mapping, this is just allows us to read the information from our Snowflake connection rather than needing to uh, set it in again uh, as variables here. And then we're all set. So now that we have our dbt DAG, we can go over to the Airflow UI and actually see what this looks like. So going in over to the Airflow UI here, we have our dbt Snowflake DAG. So I took the liberty of doing a couple runs before. Um, and so we can see here in kind of a graph view, it reads, even though it's just pointed at that directory, it's actually reading uh, all the different models, the project config, reading the order of how everything is run, and then dynamically generating a DAG based on that. So instead of you needing to you know, have five different bash operators all strung together, and then you don't have any visibility on what's happening after those bash operators trigger, versus here, I can go into the log, I can see exactly what the command output was, I can see the profile, uh, I can see all the information here that I would need to troubleshoot to understand what the action was without needing to actually go into Snowflake and check it out. But of course, I can go into Snowflake uh, if I want. I can go look at, so if I go to my database, so demo dbt, you can see we have our um, intermediary data tables. So you can see this is the booking date uh, by hotel, 30 day average cost. And then you, know, you can see our transfer sets, our end tables, our analysis. And then here we have our prep data. So this is a clean data before it actually has analysis run on it. Uh, so really cool workflow, really great way to simplify, you know, managing your really complex dbt workflows where you don't need to build out a whole corresponding complexity with airflow to get the same level of visibility now you just point cosmos at your dbt project have it read it all in dynamically and save yourself a ton of time and work um, so that is all i have for you today i hope you learned something i hope you go check out cosmos um, on your own and have a good one data guy out